I think we're live, just about ready to get started with um, this morning's green room chat. Um, I think we have everybody here. I'm Denise McGovern. I'm the Vice President of Communications for the Dallas Symphony Orchestra, and we are just about ready to get started with um, today's Green Room Chat. Kim Noltme is our host, and Katerina Vinsor is our guest today. So Kim, why don't you take it away? Good morning, everyone. Here I am live in the Morton H. Meyerson Symphony Center Green Room, and looking forward to talking with Katerina, who is at home. And so the question is, where exactly is that, Katerina? Of course, I know the answer, but the audience would like to know. Hi, good morning, Kim, and hi to everyone. Yes, I'm in Dallas now. I have an apartment here since beginning of this season, and I'm based in Dallas this whole season. So that's where I'm staying also through this time. So tell us a little bit about uh, you're coming back here. There was a bit of a break in the season and then you raced to get back to Dallas and just in time for us to cancel everything, which unfortunately didn't happen until right after you arrived. Yes, I had a, a very adventurous week in Europe, beginning of March, and then there were many announcements there and I very quickly got on a plane and now I'm here. So yes, I think you got one of the last planes out through Canada and we were thrilled that you made it. And then of course the next day everything changed. But in any case, um, we're glad you're quarantining in this city with us. And uh, it'll be nice for our audience members and others to get to know you a little bit better. So um, first tell us uh, about yourself. Uh, everyone knows you're the assistant conductor here in Dallas, but tell us you know, about your studies, how you came to want to be a conductor and that sort of thing. So I grew up in Austria in a musician's family. My parents are both music teachers. My father teaches violin, my mother singing, and I have three older sisters. So music was all around us and it just was very natural for us to, to play on all of those instruments that we had in the house. And so I was throughout my childhood just very curious of trying new things. I, I couldn't really decide or specialize on one instrument. I was um, also happy to try to write music. And then at one point I very consciously decided to not do that anymore. Sang in children's choir of an opera house and all, all of that stuff. And then when I came towards the end of high school, I tried conducting for the first time. At that point, I just gathered some friends and, and had a small choir then. And it went well, it was very interesting. So I thought I should try to, to give that a more serious try. And so I applied to university as a conductor. And from that point, I was then in Vienna for three years. Um, while I studied at university there, I always had a lot of other uh, musical activities around that. I sang a lot in Arnold Schoenberg Choir. I had really important musical experiences there. Again, I could have um, the experience of being on the opera stage there, of, of touring with them, having a lot of old music performances, a lot of Baroque music, which I love. And then when I was 22, I, I thought, well, if I want to go really into conducting, if I want to do that professionally, I should also go abroad for a while. And so I studied in Germany and then in Zurich. And now I'm in the US. Well, that's amazing. So you're so young and yet you've accomplished so much already. And I know you're not finished with your studies. Um, you're kind of taking a break. Uh, when, when will you finish? That's a good question. So 
for this year, for one semester, I took a break and now the other semester I tried to study, which is of course difficult because that's in Zurich, that's two different continents. But when I'm in Europe, I, I go there. And right now, ironically, I can study quite well again because everything is happening online. So it's on European time. So pretty early in the morning, I have to get up and be in video conferences with them. But it's really good. That's great. Now, I was there for your audition. And for those who don't know how this works, for assistant conductors, we actually have an audition with the orchestra. And uh, Fabio Luisi was also there and the artistic team, of the Dallas Symphony. And uh, so there were, if my memory serves correctly, there were five conductors who auditioned and you won. And tell us how you felt that when you found that, found out that news and all of that, because I think you were the youngest for sure. And, um, but everyone gravitated towards you. Yeah, I'm of course really happy that everyone seemed to like me. Um, the whole audition process was very comfortable in the way that just everyone was extremely nice. Everything was organized really, really well. And, and, but still just the, the personal friendliness that I experienced was great. And right after the audition, I just came here for that. So for two days, I think, I think for two, yes, for two days I was here. And I went right back to the airport then. And we were boarding. I was already in the plane and I got a call. And so I very quickly talked to, to Peter who called me then and, and I was really excited. And then I had a very long flight that everyone is supposed to sleep. And I was just very, very awake. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that makes sense that you were excited, too excited to sleep. Um, so tell us what you're doing now. We, we heard that you're studying a good many hours a day, taking online classes and all of that. And I'm sure you're studying music for upcoming concerts. But tell us, tell us what your typical day is like now that you're mostly stuck inside. And have you taken up any hobbies? Are you watching any fun television shows, uh, probably online. And um, also, uh, what are you, are you reading? Tell, tell us what's going on. Yeah, so usually the day starts with some video conferences, as I said, because most or many things are in European time. And then after that, usually I go out really motivated to, to study something. I, at the beginning, it's been now five weeks. At the beginning, I, I listened to a lot of music that I don't know yet. And, and I was just very open to, to reading about anything that I'm interested in that moment, which was a lot of non-musical stuff as well, which was great. And now I'm trying, or I am more focused now on the repertoire that might happen. We don't really know for sure, but so, I went a little bit more into some Mahler. I went into some Stravinsky and um, Brahms that might be something I need for that summer or at some other time in my life. And then the rest of the day, I think, well, very typical things we all do. We cook much more, we eat much more, and we read more, we watch more television yes that's definitely something i do as well and then my highest recommendation if anyone has too much time what i do is i knit socks it's amazing they're very comfortable and it takes a lot of time to do that well that's fun so you're a knitter in addition to everything else that's amazing so on that subject of being very accomplished Tell us how many languages you speak and how many instruments you've played. You don't have to be playing them now, but just so we get a sense of it. Um, I'm not that strong with languages. I think 
if I really want, I could say that German is my second language because in Austria we speak such a strong dialect that at some point we all have to learn proper German. And then I speak some English and very, very little bit of Italian, but right now I'm trying to get back with that because we will have an Italian opera coming up and I should at least understand that. But it's not everyday Italian in the opera, so that makes it difficult. Um, about instruments, well, I, I grew up in a house with a lot of violins, so I know what a violin feels like, but I'm really not much of a violinist at all. I played the piano always, and I used that to study scores. But again, I would not perform. I was always, I was always happy to try, you know, coming from the piano, trying to, what does a what does a harpsichord feel like? What does an organ feel like? So, I know those instruments, but I would never perform on them ever. I. When I went to high school, I played the oboe. At one point, I thought that that might be something I could do professionally. Then I went into conducting. But that's probably the instrument I was best at at any point. That's really interesting. Um, so we're very excited that you are going to be our assistant conductor next year as well. Your contract was extended. And of course, uh, we... We're hoping that next season uh, goes off as scheduled, despite all that we're going through right now. And you are also scheduled to conduct um, in this coming June. We have a number of concerts. Uh, so tell me what you're looking forward to the most uh, next season, uh, well, unless there's something in June that you want to mention also. And, uh, you know, what are your favorite pieces to conduct in general, even if we're not doing them? Well, for next season, I think the biggest things for me will be Othello, the opera. Like this season was also, the week with the opera was just the most exciting because so much was happening within one week. And Othello is again a, a really great piece and I'm looking very much forward to that. We'll have Brahms 3 at some point, we'll have Mahler 5, so those are definitely pieces I'm very much looking forward to. Verdi Requiem as well. And for myself to conduct, I'm very excited to be doing the New Year's Eve concert, so that's going to be something. That's great. Now we um, here have a tradition of um, having um, positions named in the U.S. This is a, a typical thing. And your position was named uh, while you were here, which is very exciting. Um, the Marina and Roger Galt assistant conductor. And you actually get to meet these donors and spend time with them. And what is, is that an interesting um, concept for you as compared to what goes on in Europe? That's definitely very different from anything I was used to. I think it's something really great because I have always that direct feedback of, of those people that really, really care for the orchestra and take that responsibility for the orchestra. And well, but at the same time, it was just very, very different. I'm. I was used to have much less personal contact to the audience before I came here. So I had to get used to it, of course. But it's a great thing. Marina and Roger are wonderful. So what are you doing in Dallas? I mean, now you can't do anything much, but uh, I mean, you're doing a lot in home, but you can't do anything outdoors. Are, are there places in Dallas that you like to go when you're, when you're permitted to do so, which is the normal world? Well, where I like to go is thankfully places that I can still go. For example, I, I like to go to the White Rock Lake and I have my bike here where I can go anywhere that it's beautiful and green. So the White Rock Lake is one place and now I'm just, well, of course on the Katy Trail, everyone's on the Katy Trail now. <laughs> 
Which brings me to another interesting difference between um, Europeans and people in the U.S. about cars. You don't, you're, you're not driving here. You don't have a car, which is especially unus unusual in Dallas. Um, there are other American cities where a lot of people don't have cars, but here most people do. So you just bike around, you bike to get your groceries. Tell us about that. Yes, for me, that's very normal to just walk and bike everywhere of course Dallas is just really big so there are distances that are not easy to to bike but other from that it's for me totally normal to just walk around with my groceries that's fine so tell us about what your career aspirations are. Like, are you wanting to be the music director of an orchestra in Europe or in someplace else? What, what do you hope for in the future? Obviously it's a long journey to build a career as a conductor. It's not something that happens in a few years. It takes sometimes decades to get the kind of positions you'd like, but tell us what you're thinking about. Of course, eventually it will be the goal to take more responsibility somewhere, but I know that there is so much to learn. There's so much repertoire and, and so much to just what I, what I have to understand about orchestras and about conducting that I really want to take the time that I can be an assistant as intensive and as, as long as possible to, to learn by observing and then every now and then also going on the podium and, and trying to make my own experiences and my own mistakes. And then after that, typically for a while, people guest conduct, trying to connect with different orchestras and seeing how that goes. And then after many, many years, more responsibility is of course something that could be interesting. Right now, I'm mostly doing symphonic repertoire, which is of course what we do here in Dallas. I did some opera assistant ships before and I, I, I performed, as I said, on the stage. So I, I know a little bit about that world as well. And I hope that at some point I can also be there a little bit too, but we have to see. There is not really a recipe of how to be a conductor. So I just have to be open and see what happens. So last summer you were at the Aspen um, Festival. Uh, what was that like? That's obviously a program that has a number of conductors in training. So how did you find that? Aspen was the longest and most intense festival I've ever been to. It's eight weeks and you're confronted with music nonstop. It's amazing. There are moments where it's a lot but like every day you have, not every day a different piece, of course, you, you have a concert every week and, and so you rehearse for that every week, but then some, sometimes you just do a reading session of something and you have to prepare extremely quickly. Before you go there, you don't even have the full repertoire and also you cannot even bring all the scores because it would be so much, even with two suitcases, you can't do it. So it's, it's intense and, and afterwards you need a break, but it's wonderful. There are so many young musicians and everyone is excited about it and everyone's really, really motivated. So it was a great experience. And for me, of course, it was, it was not the first time being in the States, but it was the first time having the chance to understand some differences and, and some ways that Americans approach music that could be in some aspects different from what I'm used to. Well, that's fascinating. Um, I think a lot of people don't realize what an assistant conductor does. And so, of course, you do conduct some concerts, but uh, on your, uh, that are your concerts per se, but tell us what you do when you're in the rehearsal and working with the conductors, our music director and assistant conductors. And then after that, we'll turn it over to Denise for some questions from the audience. So when I assist 
another conductor we have usually we start on tuesday in rehearsals and depending if it's the music director i know him of course i kind of know what he what he likes otherwise right before the rehearsal i meet the conductor and i have a minute maybe or just a short conversation to get a feeling how i could help that conductor and then i sit in the rehearsals i take many many notes i take notes for myself of course to to if i later on conduct that piece to know a little bit about it but i take many notes also about balance about what works and what doesn't really work and then the conductor usually asks me about it in every break we talk about how it could be improved some conductors are interested in also knowing what what i like about the interpretation or not which can be very tricky because obviously i i i'm forced to make comments about my and their own taste but other from that balance issues are the first thing that we approach and then the second part of assisting is to be always prepared to jump in which so far hasn't happened but it typically happens for every assistant at some point yes and those are some of the most special moments i think for the audience and for for the assistant conductor of course um, all right, well, let's uh, thank you so much. You're amazing. We love having you here. And I know Denise has a couple of audience questions to, to ask you. Hi, Katerina. Um, you mentioned about conducting chorus and choral works. Do you have any works for chorus and choir that you enjoy conducting? Well, many, of course. I, I started as a choral conductor with rather small a cappella works and i think i was always very much um connected to to pieces that had probably the german language or any language i could understand because that is just the essential part of of vocal music and so i love doing those i also really love doing anything from early baroque I think in the future, if I go on to do a lot of symphonic things, then at some point, of course, there comes a combination of pieces, big, big pieces with, with an orchestra and a chorus. Um, I think some a piece that I've never done, but I would love to do at some point is Brahms Requiem. I very much like anything by Mendelssohn. Next year we will have a Mendelssohn with the, with the chorus and it will be the first time that I experience that in English, which will be something new for me. I'm used to having all of that in German. That's really cool. Um, I am excited for that Mendelssohn concert as well. Um, another question, part of your role as assistant conductor is to do our education and student concerts too. And um, are there any of the programs that you've worked on that you've liked or some of the things that you would like to, to do with students in Dallas while you're here doing this job? So the, the youth concerts, I think one program that was, that I remember very clearly, it was a lot of fun and really great pieces was when we did the Beethoven program. So we did for, for, for high schools that came to the Meissen, we did a, a short one hour program where we did the highlights of different Beethoven symphonies and the Emperor Piano Concerto. And um, I think it's really great to, to just show the best music we have to people that maybe don't know yet so much about music. And so I enjoyed that. Well, that's awesome. Kim, I'm gonna take it back to you. Great, um, Katarina, actually speaking of um, the family and youth concerts, I know that you uh, participated in some interesting things like with a uh, magician Right, and then there was the birds. Do you wanna tell some funny stories about that? Cause there has to be a bit of 
a difference for you than like the typical family concerts in Europe? <laughs> yes, actually the birds, I was not the conductor for that, but with the magician I was, and I was even part of one magic, magical situation. I, I, I appeared magically on stage, which was very exciting for me. The unfortunate thing about those situations is that when you conduct while something happens on stage that's very exciting, you don't see anything about that. You hear the, the audience's reactions. And so I keep thinking, I would really like to turn around and see what's happening. <laughs> but in between, between different pieces, I have the chance to watch a little bit. And so I get something from that as well. Great. Well, I think we should wrap up in just a moment, but I will ask one last question, which is uh, about a fam favorite restaurant in, or type of food in Dallas. Is there any place that you've enjoyed a lot or any type of cuisine here that, um, you know, everybody, we all have that in common, right? Enjoying food. Of course. Um, I think in Dallas, for the first time in a long time, I ate several steaks again. Not at the same time, but that <laughs> happened occasionally. And well, I was at a really great Japanese restaurant with you, Kim. So <laughs> that <laughs> was, of course, a great experience. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you so much for making the time today to talk with us. I know everyone who's watching learned so much about you and, and the job and more about the Dallas Symphony. So thank you again, Katerina. Thank you.